Hello and welcome to the next video of my World's 2022 preview series where we covered Detonation Focus Me from Japan. Uh, down in the description you'll find three links. One to my Twitter, you can follow me there. Discord, join us. We BS about League of Legends 90% of the time. Other times it gets kind of messy. Um, but right now there's not a lot going on. I know the uh, Asia invita Champions Invitational or whatever is going on. Um, I may do a video about that. Someone suggested that that might be a good idea. Um, maybe I'll do that when it's over. But um, outside of that, there's really nothing going on. So, you know, if there's a discussion, it's probably about that or the recent patch because 1218 was announced yesterday. So that's a thing. Um, so join there we do have a space for activities category there are predictions there the predictions channel will be used once games start pick -ums, you can do that now and player pool which is something that i created where you pick five players three major region two minor region four uh play-ins and there's a scoring system and then once we get it'll be tournament style through the rest of the way depending on how many people participate um otherwise we have uh, YouTube memberships, YouTube memberships, $3, support me, keep the channel live, $10 will um, support me as well and keep the channel live, but also you get extra content, you get um, extra videos, my predictions for the winners of games the day before they come, the games are going to happen, as well as NFL predictions, um, I will say I did not do well on the NFL predictions week one, um, trying to do against the spread and over under against the spread i did downright awful um over under i was like i think eight and seven or seven and eight but um against the spread was bad i was like five and ten so take that for what you will um fantasy football stuff as well so if you like extra content and you enjoy my channel support me in whichever way you feel comfortable even if it's just subscribing liking the video sharing it um, i'd really appreciate it um now for detonation focus me just one second Okay, these guys are normally the team that shows up um, at international events out of Japan. Um, we'll see that based on um, Evie, for instance. Evie's been around for a while um, and has been to the last several international events. You know, once in a great while missing one. Um, but DFM usually is here. So, uh, coach is Kazu. Kazu uh, is 14-27 and 27 at international events. Uh, Worlds 2018 out in play-ins, MSI 2019, 8th, 9th, Worlds 2019 out in play-ins, MSI 2021, 7th, 9th, Worlds 2021 actually got out of play-ins last year and got to group stage, finished last in their group, but that was a big moment for Japan, able to get out of group, out of play-ins, which is, which is pretty big. Um, MSI 2022 this past spring were in the last tier 9th 10th um 2019 this team would represent japan in out and play-ins 2020 v3 esports i think was a team that made it out of japan and they finished last um and then this past um worlds 2021 like i said they made it out of play-ins for the first time and went to groups at least first time since 2017 um so you know this team is kind of a mixed bag uh, they play like an LCK style, and they are nowhere near as good as the LCK, which is an issue. Um, you, we we talked about it yesterday, actually, in the in the chat, speaking about Vietnam specifically, um, and how when you're not quite as good as the opponent, you've got to play a little chaotic and make the game messy in a slugfest, I think, to actually have a chance, which is why I wish the LCS would play a little more messy. Um, and stop trying to play like they're an LCK team when they're simply not. Um, it's just like DFM. I mean, I mean like Saigon Buffalo, for example. I haven't watched a lot of Gami Sports. I only watched a few of their games against Saigon Buffalo. But I'm like, if they can be as, I said disrespectful, but disrespectful in a good way towards their opponent and really get after him and say, okay, you might be better than me, but I'm going to get after you. Um, Gammy Sports has a chance because they are really mechanically very good, but um, the way they play, if you're in a scale against like Gen G or Top Esports, which is who they're against, you're going to have a problem, at least in my opinion. So, um, when we look at DFM, when they play a slow scaling game, and that's why I think they struggle. So, Eevee in top lane 
is definitely the guy to watch um, when it comes to being kind of freaky. So 3.5 KDA, 7.5 CS per minute, 61.4 KP. I mean, you'd like to, him to farm better, especially in a region that struggles in international events. You know that they are not really stacking up very high. So he's not dominating his role, which is a bit of a concern. 22.4 damage here, 550 damage per minute. That is high damage per minute given the share is so low. So this team does deal a lot of damage, and I think that has something to do with allowing their team to scale, which we'll get into. Um, and then by playing late game, they're dealing a ton of damage. Players are at full, full builds. They have their high DPS items. Uh, Eevee's usually ahead at 15 minutes, which is something given his farm is 7.5. No solo kills, 6 champions in 7 games. The thing with 6 champions in 7 games is... This is where EV gets kind of weird. So we know EV Urgot is a thing, right? That's something that he's pulled out in the past. He didn't pull it out in the seven games of playoffs. Um, but we saw a Mordekaiser, a Trindamir, and a Lilia out of EV. Um, all three champions we've seen in the major regions a couple times, but I don't think anybody's played all three. Um, honestly, I think Trindamir was only picked once or twice overall. Shanji played um, Lilia a couple times. But I don't know if he ever played Mordekaiser. So, Eevee has a, a few tricks up his sleeve. Uh, MSI 2017, they would finish last. Worlds 2017, last. Worlds 2018, um, would get past the first stage of play-ins and then get knocked out. MSI 2019, last tier. Worlds 2019, uh, bottom tier, MSI 2021, bottom tier, World 2021 out and play-ins, MSI 2022, bottom tier. So Japan tends to be in the bottom, um, except last year, Worlds. If they can go on another miracle run, who knows? 15 and 36 international events, 154 KDA, 722 CS per minute, 60.6 KP. Like I said, EV does struggle, definitely in lane, 7.22 uh, CS per minute is not good at all. Um, his advantage is the fact that he has weird counter picks that might be able to keep him in lane. Um, keep him in it. Maybe he gets a solo kill. Maybe he creates pressure. Does something. But those farming numbers are, are a struggle. And he's been playing for a long time. So that's what's going to happen. But most of the time it is in play-ins. So you're against what? You know, teams that are at your level. Whether it's Latin America, Turkey... CB Lull, Oceana, it doesn't really matter. The fact is you're against minor region players um, the majority of the time, so these numbers should be stronger. Um, jungle, we have Steel. Steel, I think, is... Pro well, how many times have I actually said it? I think Steel is was their best player at MSI 2022. In spring, Steel was one of the better junglers at the tournament. I thought he was cracked. Um, his Wukong is cracked, and Wukong was meta then. It's kind of meta still now. Um, and for him, he is making it meta. 3.5 KDA, 4.8 CS per minute, 63.2 KP. A little problematic here. Um, we've seen worse, but 4.8 CS per minute and 63.2 KP. Um, so you're not creating nearly as much as you need to, and you're not farming enough. So I say this every video. But we have different fans. If you're an LJL fan, you might not have watched my content. I feel that if a player is not farming, they got to be creating something kill-wise. And if they're not creating kills, then you better be farming. Like, you can't be doing neither. And sure, you can create pressure in lane, push somebody out of turret, and you don't get a kill out of it, and things like that. But the fact is, more often than not, I feel like these players are kind of just like doing neither and sitting in lane and wasting time. Um, so you'd like that to be a 70% or at least a 525 CS per minute. You see other players pulling it off. So if you're in a minor region and you're the best minor region team, you should be pulling it off. Um, 12, seven damage per minute, 300, um, 12, seven damage share, 317 damage per minute. That's pretty standard. I had it 15 minutes, which you don't see often. A lot of the junglers are usually behind, um, kind of surprising given the fact that his farm is so low. Um, one solo kill, two champions in seven games. That's a concern. Uh, he played a lot of Wukong despite, um, you know, Wukong being kind of off meta. Right? Well, he's meta, but he's fringe. Um, five games of Wukong. Worlds 2018 um, would make it past 
the first stage of play-ins and then get knocked out. MSI 2019, bottom tier, Worlds 2019, bottom tier, MSI 2021, bottom tier, Worlds 2021, out in groups. And then uh, MSI 2022, bottom tier, 14 and 27, 177 KDA, 533 CS per minute, 69.5 KP. So at least the numbers um, internationally are better than the numbers you put up in playoffs. Obviously, past metas were a little more um, carry-oriented in the jungle. A lot of farming till 6, which gave uh, um, junglers a higher uh, CS per minute. We're looking at 6s and things like that. And uh, Steel did that when it, the time came. We saw a lot of 5s. Um, obviously, 5.33 being the average. So obviously, it makes sense, right? Um, but I don't know how much this meta really fits Steel, because if he's still trying to force the Wukong, um, that could be problematic, because Wukong isn't as strong as it once was, and, um, this team needs to be, you know, in a good spot, team comp-wise, to have a shot here. Um, so we'll see if Steel can follow up an MSI performance with another good one here. Uh, mid lane, you have Yaharong. Yaharong, um, has been being picked in our pickums. And um, it, for good reason. And this is where we kind of get into more about that scaling thing with this team. So 7-7 seven, seven KDA, 8-9 CS per minute, 684 KP. Very high farm. 8-9 um, CS per minute. I mean, 8.5 is what I think is like, okay, we're in a good spot. And anything higher is very good. And I know Chovy is up around 10, but not everybody. I mean, Chovy is Chovy, right? Um, we don't see a lot of people over 9. So 8.9 is very good. Um, 68.4 KP does his job, given the fact that he's farming so high. At least he's getting into fights. But this team scales. This team scales. It waits. It waits. It waits until Yaharung or Yudapan are um, at full build or, or in a really good spot to try and perform. That's why he actually leads the team in damage at 30.9 damage share and 763 damage per minute. He deals the most damage on this team. And for a mid laner to do that, more often than not, they're scaling um, to get that death cap or, or to get whatever item they need. Um, the fact is, like, at 15 minutes, he's mixed. He's mixed because he may be trying to make something happen in the early game, but once mid game comes around, he is just farming and farming and farming. Um, three solo kills, four champions in seven games. Um, only performance at an uh, international event was MSI. 1 and 5, 1.75 KDA, 772 7, CS per minute, 63.6 KP. So, um, 772 7, CS per minute is Struggle Street. I understand um, that was his first international event, and you'd like him to just get better over time, um, which is, I mean, 772 7, is bottom tier, so I would like to think that he can improve on that. But we have to keep in mind, I mean, maybe he was, maybe he was a little outclassed in an international event, right? Um, farms very well, but when all you do is all you do is lane, if somebody's better th at laning than you, they are going to force you away from the wave. You're going to get shoved under your turret. They're going to freeze on you. You know you're going to get ganked and things like that. So um, that's a thing. I do remember him pulling out of Valkaz at MSI, so we have to keep that in mind. Um, we'll see if he can follow up uh, MSI with a better performance. Bot lane, we have Udipon. Udipon did very well throughout playoffs. 9.2 KDA, 10.1 CS per minute, 72.7 KP. Excuse me, pretty standard. Um, bot lane has been getting high KP throughout um, all these videos, really. Um, you know, a lot of the action being bot lane, bot lane meta. Jungler has to make things happen. So, jungle, facilitator jungle meta, right? Um, sorry about the cat in the background. Um, facilitator jungle uh, meta with emphasis on bot lane, getting bot lane ahead. 10-1 um, CS per minute, obviously dominant in lane. 9-2 um, KDA doesn't die a lot. And that was evident actually in um, my stats, going through um, the stats for um, his international experience. 28 damage share, 690 damage per minute, which is pretty standard. 690. Um, we've been seeing all the way up to 800, but we've seen some players at 550, so he's in the middle. Um, and Yaharung actually dealing more damage makes Yaharung and him clearly the two carries, and it's very close on which one's going to carry which game damage-wise. Mixed at 15 minutes, uh, Yaharung was mixed at 15 minutes as well, which means 
Uh, Games of Legends has gold, CS, and XP at 15 minutes. That means that at least one of those are negative. Um, that he's behind in one of those three categories at 15 minutes. Three champions in seven games, the likely party, Sivir, Zeri, and Lucian. Worlds 2018, out in um, second stage of play-ins, MSI 2019, bottom tier, Worlds 2019, bottom tier, MSI 2021, bottom tier, Worlds 2021, out in groups, and um, MSI 2022, bottom tier. Same as Steel and Kazu, 14 and 27, 254 KDA, 884 CS per minute, 64, 5 KP. This is what I mean. So... We've talked about my KDA and how it's different than everybody else's because I consider assists as half. I don't think an assist is worth as much as a kill. You get one little heal on somebody that gets an auto attack and you have a, an assist, right? And some people say, well, to get a kill, you just get one the last hit. Sure. It's, tr it's true. It's not a lie, but still more often than not, an assist I don't think is worth as much as a kill. Um, so 254 KDA with that in mind. Not a lot of players have been putting up over two and a half. Honest to God. Like the elite ones, yes. But out of minor regions, a lot of 1.5, 1.7. We see it here, 1.5, 1.7, 1.7, 1.6. Um, the fact of the matter is, Utapon's actually very good. Um, especially at international events. He does, he's not losing it for them. Um, is he struggling in lane at times? Some of these international events he has. One in particular, I don't know if it was last year. Um, it might've been last year. He was averaging under seven CS per minute, which is very bad. I mean, that is very, very, very bad. And I don't know if he had a Senna game in there. It wasn't one of his most played champions, the three most, but he did play five champions. So maybe he had a Senna game or two in there and that's what killed his CS per minute. But 8.8 .8 is very good for a minor region, um, 80 carry, especially one that's towards the bottom usually. Um, 64.5 KP, I don't think Utapon's going to be the reason they struggle. It'll be um, the solo lanes that'll be giving DFM a problem. Harp at support, 5.8 KDA, 78.1 KP. Clears a ward every other minute, drops a ward every other minute. Four champions in seven games. MSI 2022, bottom tier, 1 and 5, 163 KDA, 71.7 KP. So what does this say about Harp? Um makes things happen the guy that actually is making things happen more than anyone on the team leading in kp at 78.1 so um between three of every four kills and four of every five kills harp has his fingerprints on it some way shape or form um and the fact of the matter is he's not dying a lot has been paired with Utapon, and in spring they were very dominant going into um msi i thought that they actually were going to be a team that was going to surprise us because Worlds 2021, they did very well. So it was like, oh, are they going to do really well at MSI? Didn't end up happening that way. But um, I think they are a team you have to respect. And I for, if they're in Group A, this is going to be interesting because you have a situation where they can get to the second round of play-ins pretty easily. Group A only has Fnatic and um, EG. And then after that, four minor region teams. So there is, and, and I mean, it's beyond gaming. DFM, Chief, and Loud, maybe? I might be missing somebody, so if I am, I apologize. But the fact is, I think it is for the taking to be able to get to the second stage of play-ins, at least. Um, this team is certainly capable of that. I will say that I the games I did watch of this team, um, I know they dominated Sengoku Gaming during play uh, playoffs. That's, they what, they go 6-1 and one against them in two series? Um seven hence seven games yeah uh, that would make sense but uh sengoku gaming beat them in both best of ones which is something we have to really consider because it's going to be best of ones um at play-ins and the fact is the way sengoku gaming went after dfm was getting after them in the early game emphasizing objectives and then getting to soul point as quickly as possible and dfm weren't allowed to scale and clearly that is the way to beat this team this team wants to wants to play scaling and they can't, they can't play scaling against a team that's like, okay, well, we're going to get after you and we're going to cause some problems in the early game for you. We're going to gank. We're going to get aggressive. Like an aggressive team doesn't have to play perfectly and I, and they can beat this team. I think in that, I think that's what the problem's been year after year, to be honest with you. Um, 
Because, like, it just, you, you can't play that LCK style if you're not as mechanically gifted as an LCK player. And some of these players are very good, but they're not at the level of a major region team. So, we'll see how DFM does. Uh, comment down below with your opinions on how you think they're going to do at Worlds. Like the video if you like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Become a member on Discord. Follow me on Twitter. Become a YouTube member. Um, by now there might be a playlist around me, Worlds 2022, it's got all my Worlds 2022 content, um, all the teams so far I've done, as well as additional videos that pertain to Worlds. So thank you for watching, and I hope you come back for more content.